Hurricane season, it isn't over just yet, everybody. Amanda Holly standing by with a full look at our forecast coming up here on Track in the Tropics. We're going to send it right over to Amanda Holly. Hey there, Amanda. What are we looking at there in the Gulf of Mexico right now? Actually, we're talking about a tropical disturbance that could be targeting the Gulf of Mexico, right? That's exactly right. The National Hurricane Center giving this area a medium chance of development. Right now, it's a lot of unsettled weather sitting near Mexico. Some of it's in the Bay of Campeche. Some of it's actually south of Mexico. Uh, and we're not really sure. There's kind of two different areas right now that, that have a, a chance of development. The southern area, this area of convection, is actually a potential tropical cyclone 16. But that's in the Pacific. That's going to make its way towards the mountains of Mexico and kind of dissipate. But we're also watching this area here of showers and thunderstorms that's in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, that's the area that actually has a medium chance of developing as it makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico. So 30% chance over the next two days, a 50% chance over the next five days. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on. And you can see the direction of this bubble, the unsettled weather, the area of showers and thunderstorms, they're going to be making its way into the Gulf of Mexico towards us. So certainly something we're going to be watching. Obviously, it's moving over some very warm Gulf waters right now, and these temperatures are warmer than average. However, yes, it, the, the system does have this going for it if it wants to develop it. It has some things impeding it. There is going to be some higher than normal amounts of wind shear that would prevent it from getting very strong if we see it develop at all. Uh, so that's some good news for us in terms of impacts. But as it moves across the Gulf of Mexico, it does have a lot of fuel for it, but it has some higher than normal wind shear that it will uh, have to overcome if it does want to develop. I think regardless though, uh, the bottom line with this area of potential development, it's going to increase our moisture levels. It's going to increase our rain chances, especially heading into the weekend. So uh, we're going to see this increase in tropical moisture making its way towards really the Gulf Coast. Uh, pinpointing location is hard to say at this point, but I, I do think that somewhere along the Gulf Coast here could see an increase in rain chances as well as the peninsula of Florida. So most models at this point, the GFS and the European, what we like to look at, right, uh, bring it somewhere in between Louisiana and the panhandle of Florida as a weekend, maybe tropical depression, tropical storm here. Uh, but regardless, Tampa Bay would likely be on the eastern side of the storm, and that's kind of of where we would see the extra moisture, but a lot of moisture does look like it will head towards the northern Gulf Coast as well. Certainly something we're going to keep an eye on here. Um, it's not an area of invest just yet, so we don't have particular models that we can look at the spaghetti models just yet. I think that that will be coming here shortly over the next day or so, but not unusual for this time of year. Hurricane season certainly not over yet. We're only in the middle of October. We have about six weeks left to go all the way through the end of November, but for October, this is typically where we see uh, storms develop and their potential paths as well. So right now we're looking at this area in the Bay of Campeche and it's going to take a path sort of like that. But certainly something we're going to keep an eye on if it were to be named. The next named storm on the list is actually Nestor. So you'll have to keep an eye out that for that over the next couple of days. But if you hear the word Nestor, that's kind of what we would be talking about. And just to give you a recap, we've actually been watching uh, Tropical Depression 15. It was a tropical depression that had come off the coast of Africa here. It's no longer. It was the remnants this morning and the National Hurricane Center is no longer issuing advisories on 15. Good news for us. Not, nothing to worry about there. It was obviously way across the pond anyway, next to Africa. So all, all eyes right now, JB, are on this area of unsettled weather in the Bay of Campeche that the National Hurricane Center is giving a medium chance of developing. Just recapping, it's going to move into the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to head for the northern Gulf Coast, maybe the Florida Panhandle uh, pinpointing location is hard to do at this point, but it is going to, regardless of development, increase our rain chances heading into this weekend. All right, everybody, Amanda Holly uh, joining us there at the Weather Wall, and that allows us to bring in the rest of our panel of meteorologists here, WFLA Storm Team 8 meteorologist Julie Phillips joining us in the middle of your screen, as well as from WKRG News 5 in Mobile, Alabama. Joining us once again on the program, everybody, it is Thomas Geeboy. Hello to you both, guys. We're going to bring you guys both in here, and I want to hear what you have to say about this in regards to could this impact the Gulf Coast, and what kind of amount of rain could we be talking about here in the days ahead? Julie, you want to start? All right, yeah, I'll start. So we are watching again. Uh, Amanda said this is still a disturbance, so this isn't an actual organized system yet. So as we head into the 
end of this week and into the upcoming weekend, we're going to continue to see deeper moisture move back in. I, I know in the Tampa Bay area, the last month or so, since really beginning of September, we've had lower moisture than we typically would. But with this system, that would help to bring back in some deeper moisture, which for late October is when we typically see drier weather. So that would be a definite change for us, regardless of any development. We'd have some deeper tropical moisture moving in again late this week into the weekend. In terms of development, um, right now wind shear, like Amanda mentioned, is something that could prevent uh, a lot in terms of strengthening or um, the amount of rainfall though would be highly dependent on if this system actually was fully organized. And again, uh, whereabouts it actually would, the center of it or the general area of this system would move into the Northern Gulf Coast. So that would depend on who saw more in terms of rainfall amounts. So it's probably still too early to, to give those uh, exact totals. But for the end of this week and then as we head into the weekend is when we would expect to see some of those increasing rainfall totals anywhere from, say, Louisiana east through the Florida Panhandle. And of course, you know, on the eastern side of these tropical systems is where you see that deeper moisture in Florida would be included in that, including Tampa Bay area as well. And Thomas, I would imagine that... Uh the WKRG over there in Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola as well. You guys are also monitoring this pretty closely, aren't you? Yeah, we're keeping a close eye on things because with with the unknowing of the track so far or if this is even going to develop into a tropical storm or even a tropical depression, there are still a lot of questions that need to be answered. And like we've been talking about, the eastern side of this area of low pressure is likely going to have the higher moisture content, which means – the who gets the majority of the rain is going to be highly dependent on where the low pressure ends up going. We are not thinking that at this time it's going to be too strong of a system. Like we've mentioned, there's going to be a decent amount of wind shear in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Plus, this is likely going to be moving fairly quickly, which means it's probably not going to have too much time uh, to get organized. As we see here with the sea surface temperatures, the Gulf of Mexico, it's always warm, especially this time of year. So that wouldn't necessarily be a hindering factor here. But with it moving quickly, with there being plenty of moisture, uh, and also with there being a decent amount of wind shear, we're not thinking it could develop into something too strong. Obviously, it's something that we'll have to continue to watch. But I'd say anywhere from Louisiana all the way over towards uh, Florida needs to be watching this because depending on the track, that's going to determine who gets rain, possibly a high amount of rain in possibly some areas, whether or not we could see winds from maybe even a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Uh, but I think the hurricane hunters are going to be investigating this later on today, and we're going to get a better and better idea of what this is eventually going to do. And as far as, as we're being joined here again by Amanda Holly and Julie Phillips on the top of your screen from WFLA News Channel 8 here in Tampa, Florida, as well as WKRG News 5's uh, Thomas Geeboy over there in Mobile, Alabama. Guys, when, when we're talking about where we are in hurricane season, Amanda, I'll have you hop in here. We are not out of the woods yet, so to speak, right? I mean, there's still a chance that this becomes a tropical storm, though. What are the chances of this actually becoming what I think was Nestor is what you said? Yeah, Nestor. The National Hurricane Center just pushed out their 2 p.m. update on this, and it, it increased the chance of development 50% for the next two days. I and think 50%. I saw you updating the numbers there, yeah, right? Yeah, if you saw me behind the scenes, I did. Increased the chance 50% for the next two days, and they remained it at 50% for the next five days. So, uh, you know, it's a 50-50 shot at this point. They Obviously, it has fuel. The warm water temperatures will help it develop, but there is going to be that shear that could prevent it from developing. Regardless, both both the models do keep it on the weaker side, which is good news, but obviously something we have to watch, uh, you know, as it as it moves towards the Gulf Coast. I, I, I do think it could have a, a chance of developing. This is what we look for this time of year. And, and Julie, a, a late October hurricane, not unheard of. Uh, absolutely. If you look at almost the historical activity level, you know, we start off with low low numbers in june things really kind of slowly work on up and then september is kind of the peak september 10th is the historical peak of hurricane season things taper off but there is a secondary slight peak in the month of October, and oftentimes uh, the activity that we see in October develops in the Gulf. So this is definitely not abnormal. Um, folks along the Gulf Coast, including us in Florida as well, we have seen hurricanes. Again, we just had the anniversary of Michael last week. So, you know, we are definitely still in the thick of things until you get to the end of October, November. November is when things really taper off and we see uh, seldom activity, uh, maybe something in the, um, you know, open Atlantic develop, but we don't often see 
anything that affects land during the month of uh, November, at least in the U.S. But October, a different story. There is sometimes development and uh, that's not totally unusual. And with us watching something in the Gulf, this is exactly if we were going to see something where we'd expect to see it. A lot of times we can see cold fronts that start to work their way into the Gulf and that can help spawn areas of low pressure. So we'll have to see, um, like uh, Amanda mentioned and Thomas mentioned, this thing is moving fairly quickly. So hopefully that shortens any length of time that we would have for any potential development. But definitely some moisture, deep moisture in place, plenty of warm fuel. We'll just have to see the wind shear. And in terms of any pinpointing an exact location or if this would be a weaker tropical storm or stronger, it's just hard to do that before you get an actual organized area of low pressure. Um, if you've been watching Tracking the Tropics through the summer, we've, we're talking about that as we start to watch disturbances. It's hard for any models to really handle exactly what it will do until you actually have that storm or depression out there. So right now, this is just a cluster of thunderstorms that we are keeping an eye on. Thomas, yeah, and as I, Thomas I, just mentioned that the hurricane hunters were going in there. That's going to be helpful. It's always helpful to, to kind of get that data just to see what they find. If they see an area of, you know, closed circulation, uh, just the wind speeds, you know, the, the convection that they're, they're going to find. It's always helpful to receive that data. Yeah, and Thomas, I wanted to bring you in here because I remember uh, it was a couple years ago. You guys had Nate hit you guys uh, there in Mobile. That was an October system. I believe that was Hurricane Nate, if I'm not mistaken. You remember it, I'm sure, from your days over there in Mobile covering it. I know you and I covered it there together. That was an October storm that pinpointed Mobile. Yeah, and it was It's honestly, based on what I'm seeing, could be fairly similar because Nate was a low-end Category 1 hurricane, but it was a very quick moving hurricane it was moving around 20 miles per hour at the minimum as it worked its way from the yucatan peninsula and worked its way north towards us so this system is likely going to be moving fairly quickly which means it might not have as much time to strengthen uh, which is just another reason why everyone along the central and eastern gulf of mexico needs to be watching it but if this doesn't develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane, then this is likely going to bring beneficial rain to parts of the southeast. I'm sure you're talking about it in Tampa and along with here, there have been plenty of drought conditions in place. And typically this time of year, if you're going to get moisture, sometimes it does come from the tropics and this could help ease some of the drought. But obviously nobody wants to deal with a tropical storm or a hurricane and like we've been talking about. It's about a 50-50 chance whether or not it actually becomes Nestor. So we'll watch it closely. Uh, but there are factors in play that could see it develop, and there are other factors that might inhibit, inhibit its development. So I think that 50-50 chance is uh, pretty accurate at this point. Amanda, Julie, we'll, we'll kind of end out on, on this because it, I, I, I'm doing tracking the tropics enough. I'm not a meteorologist, but I, I have learned from you guys enough to know that rapid intensification is always possible. As far as the intensification process, once the system does get past land there and actually makes it into the Gulf of Mexico and starts to move towards the Gulf Coast, what kind of um, environment do we have for intensification? Maybe, Amanda, I'll start with you. What are we, what are we looking at here? I, I see that we have the 50-50 chance for development there, but what are we talking about as far as intensification goes? Well, right now we have a stalled frontal boundary that's kind of draped across the Gulf of Mexico, and that's producing some wind shear. We're going to see another front kind of come in and also keep the wind shear levels up. That's going to prevent fast formation. And like Thomas said, the system is moving fairly quickly as well, which is good news because if it sits over an area, it has a little better uh, chance of getting organized. But since it's moving quickly, since we have a lot of wind shear in the environment, uh, the chances of that are low. I'm not going to say they're at zero because of what happened with Michael last year. Um, you know, there, there's always that chance to see some sort of formation and organization. But at this point, the chances are on the lower side. And Julie, so what do you think that as far as the potential of the storm, we're talking about maybe, I mean, perhaps tropical storm status, if it does develop intense, you know, the intensification follows suit. And we're talking about maybe a tropical storm, maybe low end cat one, if anything. Well, right now you have to think it's already Wednesday and we don't even have a depression yet. Right. So by the weekend, this is would be expected to the center of this area would be expected to be already overland, which would halt any further development once it reaches over land. So we've got, you know, 48, less than 72 hours for any potential development. We don't have a depression yet. So I think this is something to watch for any potential moderate impacts. You know, I don't think we're really in a position like last year where we right. had, you know, 
M Michael, that so rapidly intensified into a Category 5. I don't think that's a scenario we're looking at. But could we see maybe a stronger tropical storm by the, the weekend? Absolutely. So that's not out of the question. Could this stay just a disturbance? Absolutely, that is possible as well. So, um, you know, I think. We'll see. That's the likely scenario now, but we'll keep you updated. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to be keeping you updated here on Track in the Tropics. If anything, of course, develops with this storm, whether or not it continues to develop or continues to, or if it just, you know, doesn't become a name storm, we're going to be following it here on Track in the Tropics. We stream live 130 Eastern, 1230 Central every Wednesday. We also do special editions of our live streaming program whenever we have interesting news in the tropics to talk about. Our team of meteorologists here on Track in the Tropics always keeping an eye on what's going on out there and we'll be continuing to monitor it right here on this app, this website, or this social media platform. So for Storm Team 8 meteorologists, Amanda Holly and Julie Phillips and joining us all the way from Mobile, Alabama, our featured meteorologist today, WKRG's Thomas Geboy. I'm JB Buno. Thanks so much for being with us here and we'll see you next time on Track in the Tropics, everybody. Take care. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics. 